LJ just came on. So LJ, I was just, uh, you know, having a little introductory talk. There you are. Welcome, my brother. And uh, just saying a little prayer of thanks to our Lord God that, you know, for giving him this opportunity and this, uh, this, this time to share, to teach, to learn, and to grow. Because there is no other purpose in life like Jesus, that God said, you know, let him that glory glows, glory in this that he knows and understands me. And the more we know the word of God, the more is revealed to us the truth that uh, is only Jesus and none else, the more we will grow and the more we will be established, the more we will be anchored. He is the anchor of our soul. And we are not going to be blown about by every wind of doctrine that is out there. And man, there's not just winds. There are like hurricanes of doctrines out there that are blowing people from here to there and there to here. And, you know, they don't have any kind of root or any grounding, any foundation, because they're not founded upon the rock of, of the, on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. And that rock we understand through his word. So welcome, LJ. So as we had uh, discussed, you know, I would like you to, uh, you know, be, to share with us today. And uh, basically, you know, you can be the pilot, I'll be the co-pilot, and then we can, uh, you know, share uh, whatever, whichever direction you want to take it in. We have been talking on the subject of history. And again, you know, people talk about like the, the, the world is coming and falling apart. Why are we studying history? Because it is only in understanding the history of what has happened in the past that we can really and truly understand what is happening today and what will happen tomorrow and, you know, what to expect in the future. So history is a very, very otherwise, the Bible is like, you know, at least a quarter of it or more is history. So if God didn't think that it was an important topic, it wouldn't be in the Bible. That's why we study history. So go right ahead, LJ. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. God bless you all. Sorry I'm late. Um. Yeah, history is very important when we don't understand where we come from, who our creator is, and, and the truth about our history, then we, we, we're going to fail in understanding where we're going in the future. So um, we have been talking about the begin the prehistory of this creation from the start of the creation of the heaven from the, the time of um, the earth becoming without form and void. And um, I just want to go back to um, what exactly is um, the word, because we know that everything was created by the word. And um, if, Paul, if, if, I, if I can share my screen, um, I'm a little unprepared today. I'm sorry, I just I had a rough night and I'm just trying to get everything together. Hold on. Okay, so I just want to read um, First John, I mean, uh, not First John, John 1, and it says, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So nothing is has come into existence without it being made by the word. Can y'all hear me okay? I know my computer acts up sometimes. Yeah, you're, you're coming through fine. Uh, everything is, sounds good, video is good. Your okay. screen is not sharing right now, but uh, if you're planning, if you have, if, I don't know if you've started it or not, but uh, yeah, everything is otherwise audio and video is fine. Okay, I see the screen share, all right. Nothing was made without the word, all right? And I did a, um, a video on my channel that you can watch later about um, what is the word, what is the word of God? And it is um, the mystery of our creation. So uh, let me just open up the PowerPoint real quick. So the word, what is the word? Okay, the word is a, um, is a programming language not a language like English or Hebrew or the languages that we speak, but is a language that that programs and, and, and creates like a computer software. Okay. Psalm 147.5, great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. <clears throat> one, one of the things that um, 
I used to think about when I was a child and, and um something my um my cousin was like my brother. He's we're, we're really close to me and we grew up in the church and that's 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 something that kind of like really messed us up because we think of what heaven is going to be like, like like it's going to be like in church. And he was like, oh, man, church is so boring, and, and I hope heaven is not like that. We're going to be, you know, in, in church and worshiping God and, and praising God and, and you know, going to be like, God, I'm tired. I'm tired of worshiping you. I'm, I'm tired of doing all this and thinking that it's going to be like church. It's not, it's not going to be nothing like a church service. <laughs> heaven is, is, um, is going to be about learning and understanding and, and, be, and becoming the creator. We're going to become who the creator is and his understanding is infinite. So if he, he can't, if he, if he doesn't understand, if his um understanding is infinite and he can search out the end of his understanding, then it wouldn't be infinite anymore. So when we get to heaven and, and learn and our understanding is going to be infinite also. So it's going to be a time of learning, of learning and um growing forever. So we know in the beginning of the, um, in the beginning, God created the heaven. And we know that it is, it is a gap there. And then he created creatures, beings. And then he created the earth. The earth is a habitation of dry land and water. And right now, we don't understand everything. Yeah, don't worry about it, LJ. Just take your time. Go through your uh, notes, whatever you need to. It's okay. We are in no rush here. We can, uh, you know, take your time. Okay. There's a lot of stuff we, we went over already and okay. And that's okay too to repeat stuff because uh you know one of the one of the ways that God teaches is and he told us, you know, that you shall meditate in his word day and night, mm -hmm. which is to roll things over again and 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 keep doing it. And that's uh, so repetition. Uh, sometimes it might be the hundredth time that uh, the revelation comes. So it doesn't hurt to repeat things. Right, right. Okay. Oh, you know what? Last time we was um we was here, we talked about music. I don't want to talk about that. That's what I want to talk about. All right. The word of God is like a um, I believe it's like a musical language. And when God speaks, like when he for instance, when he said, let there be light, it wasn't in like a language that we can understand. I believe it was in like musical notes. And then, um, okay, so when in Job 38, 7, it says, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So in the process of when God was creating the heaven and the earth, I believe it was like a, 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 some kind of music that was playing that was, that was in existence. And these morning stars were singing along with the creation and the sons of God were shouting for joy because their, their earth <laughs> being created right in front of their eyes. God is langu God, God's language is music. Music is the most powerful programming language in the world. Okay, Philippians 2, one through eight. If there be any therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort and love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now this, I have highlighted being of one accord, and that's, that's like a musical term, you know, being on one accord, being um, in harmony, in, in one mind, and the same as in Acts one fourteen, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Okay, Proverbs 6, 16, I'm gonna just read verse 19. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. So discord is the opposite of being on one accord. When when people sow discord, they, they cause division, and, and God hates that. You know, six things does the Lord, Lord hate. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift and running in mischief, and false witness that, that speaks lies. And he that sow discord, that is one of the most <clears throat> dangerous things that somebody can do is, is sow discord. Like you have a, 
a band that's playing right and they, and they playing all in 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 on one accord and, and in harmony and then you have this one guy that's 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 playing off key or or off playing the wrong notes on purpose you know trying to trying to disrupt the, the, the song god hates that because his music is perfect and then we have somebody disrupting that that that, that causes the whole song to be disrupted and and, and destroyed so psalm 82 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk in they walk on in darkness all of the foundation of the earth are out of course so this is this is another um like a musical term, you know, the, the, the earth is, is stationary and stable, but yet it, it has a vibration or a, um, a, a chord of, of, of um, like, a, like a musical uh, sound that is playing. You look up in the, in, the, in the skies and you see the stars pulsating. I believe that they're, they're like a musical notes that are, that are pulsating in water. So that's, that's another topic, but it's the whole, the whole earth, the whole creation is out of course, it's out of tune. And, you know, people always say, let's, let's, let's be in tune with the universe. And, you know, because, you know, because of all, all the creations out of tune and it's, it's on the same frequency as evil. The devil uses music because he knows how powerful it is from God using it to create and program everything. But Satan is the opposite of opposite of good. So it is all used for evil. The devil used music for evil and it programs you to. It programs you to to be turned away from the truth, to be turned away from the true um, the true gospel in the tune of God. So we all need to be on the same tune, on one accord, on one vibration, and on the same frequency as our Creator. Not the creation, you know. People they always say the universe told me this, and and the universe this, and the universe that, and we don't, we need to be on the same frequency. And that's that's not that's not the case because. <clears throat> the universe is out of tune, is is out of out of um sync with, with the creator. So the, the not not the creation, which has been temper the, temp the creation has been temporarily infected with evil. And that that reason right there is to bring us to understanding of love, because without evil, there's no understanding of good, and there's no understanding of love. That's why evil came in the beginning, because the, those those um, people in that age, the angels and the men, they didn't understand love. So that's why evil had to be birthed. And one of the, the things that brought that evil was, was music. Music, well, first of all, it was the creation of um, commerce and uh, money. And then this angel, the anointed cherub, he, he was a musical creature. So he, he brought about this, this sin with, with the, um, the, the, the programming language of music. That's why this whole, whole creation has been out of tune with God since that time. Can I can I add something here, LJ? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So anyhow, like what you're saying is, uh, you know, like as as uh, many of you guys know, that uh, uh, I have studied. Uh, I have, anyways. I used to be a lot of interest in uh, fantasy fiction, and I read like uh, you know, especially like works of uh, Tolkien, like who is the author of the Lord of the Rings, which is a very famous work. But anyway, so he also wrote another book before, which is which predates the Lord of the Rings. It's called the Silmarillion, and in this he has a whole history of creation, and uh, it is interesting. You know, where do these guys get this information from? It's supposed to be fiction, but in that, like God, it, it, he calls God uh, by a different name. But he he stated later on that you know that his God that he was in that was based on the God of the Bible, and in that story. He has some angels, they're called Ainur, and they are all singing in the beginning, okay? And then there was this one angel who was like the most powerful of them, and then he started singing out of tune, okay? And that is what introduced discord, and that is what started bringing corruption into that creation, and that's how that story begins. So, you know, again, like a lot of everything that is in this Bible, I mean, in this world, whether it's fiction, whether it's like mythology, whatever, it has a basis in truth. So that story was, you know, I found it very interesting, the story of this angel who sang out a tune and brought discord into creation. And then things started corrupting and evil came and, you know, all these evil creatures started coming. So it's a very interesting history to read when, when a person understands the Bible, that this has all been taken from the Bible, but most people have no idea that these stories that they share are from the Bible. And another note about music, you know, I live in Canada, so up north here we see the, 
uh, the, the what's called the Northern Lights. And I remember when mm-hmm. this, this was quite a while ago, but the one time I was in uh, Winnipeg, which is quite far north, it's like the Siberia of Canada. And, you know, like it was a very cold winter night and uh, there was this spectacular display of northern lights out there. And it was like you could just stand out there and you knew this was some kind of orchestra that's playing. And it was just like the most amazing, one of the most amazing sights I've ever seen. And, uh, yeah, so you're absolutely right. The music is uh, is the language in which God expresses himself. He doesn't use like English or Hebrew or any of these other human languages. So please go ahead. Yep. So we know we know um, music is a, is a powerful language because in the um, first Samuel 16, 23, I'm gonna read, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took in heart and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. See, God's music will make any evil spirit depart and flee from his power. God's music is his word. The whole word is like a symphony, an orchestra where every instrument is playing in tune. Every voice is singing on key in harmony and on one accord. <clears throat> so when 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 Saul was was um vexed by this evil spirit, you know, he was he was he was um he was um being tormented, you know, and I, and I know a lot about that. So music, if it's godly music, it has to drive away whatever is bothering you, you know, it's because it is is that much powerful that that it can that the tunes, the notes, the the frequency of it, the 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 evil cannot stand in that same place where godly music is being played, and that's that's a testament right there in in First Samuel when David was playing that heart. Now we are instruments created by God for Him to play us. We are all different different instruments. And when I was in um in grade school, and even now I, I play the trumpet and I play the drums, and with me. You know, I I have to um, read the notes, and the notes are like a mathematical um, thing. You know, we have to understand the letters and in, in, in the um, the right timing of it. The same with the drums. It's, it's like a it's like a beat. It's like you have to follow the same beat as everything else. And some people can sight read music, and some people can play by ear. You know, I never could do that. I, have, I always have to like read notes to um, to play, but. When you when you finally understand the 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 the, the math of it, 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 it's a beautiful thing. So we are instruments. You know, you you have, you know, different types of instruments that play different different tunes. So God's <clears throat> God's music is His word. The whole word is like a symphony. All right, we are instruments. You know, so you have some drums in the percussion section. Then you have a string section along with the horn and the wind sections, all in perfect tune playing the most magnificent song you can you couldn't even imagine. So we all are being played by someone. Somebody is, is playing you. You know, it, it is either by God the creator or it is by Satan and his evil ensemble. That's it. It's really no middle ground. It's no gray area, no neutral position. And it's very foolish and sad when people think that they can stay on the fence. You know, this is not like politics where you can you can be independent, not choosing God or the devil. It's just not possible, but the default is death. I'm going to read Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye should serve, whether the gods of your fathers that your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the God of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. And in Deuteronomy, it says, I set before you this day, Life and good. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse, cursing. Therefore, choose both, both thou and thy seed may live. So, if we are instruments made for God, then the, then the tune that we will be playing, joy, peace, etc. The fruits of the the fruit of the spirit is the sounds we produce from God playing His music through us. I would like to add that uh, you know the word harmony itself is is uh, 
is uh, from which we even get like a musical instrument called harmonica. Sorry, I was your video was frozen there, Aljay. So I was just saying that uh, even the word harmony is a uh, is a musical word. Okay, it uh, we even have an instrument called the harmonica, which is based on that. So harmony is uh, exactly everybody playing the instrument, every member, you know, fitting into the the orchestra as God has planned it, and not being and uh, not being out of tune. And that is only possible through us all being united by the Spirit of God Himself. All right, please continue. Are you? Are you I see you're back. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So the 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 music that we should be playing is the same as the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. <laughs> against us, law. So th these are the sounds that we should be playing. You know, also, the, this, if God is playing us and we are his instruments, we should be playing the tune. Can you mute yourself, um, Vanessa? Thank you. So the, another, um, another thing that we should be playing is the, the sound of completion, wholeness, integrity. And this is coming from the word integer, which is a mathematical term relating to music as a whole number that cannot be subdivided. Integer is a whole number, a number that is not a fraction, integer volumes, integer values, uh, a complete, a thing complete in itself. When God, when we, when we become God's instruments by believing and studying his word, also by playing the word of God, listening to it over and over again, like the brother said, meditation and, re, and rolling it over in our mind over and over again, the more we study, the more we study this word, the better musicians that we become, the better in tune with our creator we become. This is how we have fulfill, fulfilling lives, completeness, and wholesome lives, restoring our souls from the evil, horrible songs that have been playing, playing in us from birth. Like a chainsaw ripping our souls to shreds, God can even restore that. So right from when we are born, we are being played by evil because evil infects us right before we are born right in the womb we, we we really don't have a choice with that it's just that's just how it is so and that's going back to being the image of god like we we have to be infected with evil first and then god rewrites that evil with his blood he rewrites it with with his blood with the music of the creator when we start being when we start being instruments for him and he starts playing playing us that's when he can restore us with this music just like just like how saul was, was healed and restored when David was playing for him. Psalm 23, three, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. When God speaks, it's not like any language that we know of, like English or Hebrew, but God's word, when God's word comes forth, it is like the most wonderful harmony ever heard. And it brings healing and peace like it did to King Saul when David played for him. Same with us. When we believe it, God's word brings healing to the body, to the mind, to the spirit, and to the soul. Then everything that is in us begins to play in tune with God. And that is how we become complete. So that's just a little bit about another side of the word, the word of God. It is a, it is a programming language. It is a musical language. And, it's, and, it's, and that's, that's just a fraction of what we can understand in this life, when we when we get to the next life, then we will understand so much more about what this word is. So, <clears throat> uh, can I just add to you know? Sorry to interrupt you, but <clears throat> yeah, that word that you introduced, integrity, which comes from math, it's a mathematical, is it's a mathematical uh, you know term that is based on an integer, which is that that is something that is whole. That a person is uh, when a person is whole, it's called it's it's called that he has integrity. Then you know they're not like uh, divided into pieces, and that's why God has to restore us because that's what the devil does. You know he's always uh, taking us apart. But uh, that's a very deep subject you introduced to the music uh, because the subject of music and mathematics, which I think it deserves study, much more study than any people, especially in Christian world, have done. Yes, you know, you have a lot of people that talk about Bible codes and such, which is all nonsense. I don't believe any of that to be the truth. But nonetheless, everything has to be based on some type of mathematics, okay? And uh, that's that's why music itself is a mathematical language. 
uh, I just want to just, you know, throw that out there that uh, the underlying structure of everything has to be based on math, which is expressed as music. And that's, mm-hmm. you, you get musical notes, you know, they are like mathematical as well. That is something which is real. And it's just that uh, it's such a complex subject that I don't think any of us can understand it fully in this time or even come close to understanding it. But uh, but that's how we all become one is when uh, it's the same spirit that is playing all of us. And it's the, that, that's why, as I prayed in the beginning, that God will unite us through his Holy Spirit. And we thank God that he has given us that. So anyhow, I just wanted to add that there. So thank you, LJ. Please continue. Yeah, thank you, brother. So I just wanted to um just just touch on the subject of of music because it's it's like like brother Paul said it's a vast um subject that, that needs to be studied in, in detail and this is just not enough time to do it and I just wanted to touch on it just a little bit when I'm talking about this this word that that creates everything. You know, when so you sorry to interrupt again, but I just want to draw attention to people to the book of Revelation, because when you read Revelation, you know, all through from the beginning to the end, you hear about uh, music, about songs being played, you know, people uh, singing, praising. It's, it's just like music is everywhere through that Bible and that that book, I mean, through that book. And that book gives us a glimpse of the current heaven more than any other book in the Bible. So you understand that how big a role music is playing in this heaven and i'm sure it'll be quite the same in the new heaven yep so going going back to the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god now where words are very important in 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 anything and especially in studying the word of god so the very first word in the in the bible when we read is the word genesis and that is the word genomai in Hebrew. <clears throat> and from that word, we get genetics, generation, genealogy, genos, and begotten, which is a very significant word in the Bible. And this all ties into reproduction. You know, we understand that God, the, the purpose of creation is for God to reproduce himself in a, a flesh and blood body, uniting flesh and blood, flesh and spirit. So reproduction is the action or process of making a copy of something. God is copying himself or making it like a Xerox copy, a clone of himself in us who are who are chosen to be transformed into him. It, and some of the similar words are copy and duplication, um, replication, replicating, breeding, procreation, multiplying. He said, be fruitful and multiply. All of this is the heart of the Bible, all right? The word is a programming language, just like DNA are like letters and genes are like words. It's the same thing as in math. Math and I believe math and music are cousins and they're closely related. DNA is the language of a human genetics using letters, amino acids. Genes are groups of DNA that have specific function. Just like words and, and uh, a gene has meaning only when the correct letters are, are being used. Just like in musical notes, it's not going to sound like me unless the unless the right notes are in the right exact place. So this is a covenant I will make with them after those days. Oh, my. All right, this is a, co- a covenant I will make with them after those days, say the Lord, that I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I will write them and their sins and iniquities. I will remember no more. <clears throat> so he's going to God is writing, writing a program, a program, you know, when you when you have a, a computer, like when I'm on a computer, I work on a program called AutoCAD, and it and it create it, it creates um, blueprints and and drawings that that people use to build structures. Now this program um, called AutoCAD was created by somebody, and this program is being used to create these other things. So God, it's the same with God and His program, and He program He He made a program that He will put in us. And that is his laws. His laws and his and his um his word is what is the program that he's putting in us, that he's writing in us. And this is what Hebrews is talking about. So, what is what is the word again? Okay, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. So we know the word is is um you know what Je- we know Jesus is the word in um is the word of God and God in the flesh. Now the word, this word only begotten comes from the word genomai. Okay, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 2, 9. And Jesus Christ 
is the image of the invisible God. And this is tying back to the image of God when in the in teaching and all of this stuff. All right, so the uh, the programming language is is a coding. <clears throat> you know, some people understand what what coding is, and um, this is where I um I learn a lot from video games because video games are made from a code. You know, and also when I again going back to what I, the program that I use AutoCAD. You know, when I when I type in a, a, um, a formula or a code, it produces an image on the screen. Like, for instance, I, you know, uh, like a cube, you know, to make this to construct this cube on the screen, I have to type in a, a series of, of numbers and letters. And that is what makes up this cube. This, this is what the word of God is. is it is a code and it is a language that 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 is encoded in creation in, in that code it, it it represents everything that that the um the flesh and blood flesh and blood uh being is just like the matrix the matrix is is the, is a movie about um a coding it's a coding language that that is like a uh what do you call this a, a like a reality that is made up of coding all right all things all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. John 1, 3. Okay, Psalm 139, 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. <clears throat> so sub my substance, this is talking about our body, our bodies. It was made Un, unperfect, and, and God has written this this language. He, 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 we are written even before we were even we were even made. All of our members, our members are our, our limbs and our, 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 our legs and our arms are that what makes up our body. All of those all of those pieces, our eyes, our ears, everything that makes us up was written in a code before we were created. All right, for in Him, Acts seventeen twenty eight, for in Him. We live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we also his we, for we are also his offspring. So even though God is 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 outside of the creation, we still live and move and have our being inside of him. God is is not afar off like people think that that he's he's distant and, and up. Up, up in the clouds, looking down on us. No, he, he's experiencing everything that no, we. No, what I understand that's coding, coding. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Can, oh yeah. Um. Let's talk about there. Well, you could go back and listen to it later, but he brought that up. How he learned about like video games, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're not muted. I can hear what I was saying. That exactly. If somebody wanted to say something, if they are, please unmute yourself and say it. Otherwise, we will have some, uh, you know, questions or comments after LJ finishes his talk. Did you want to say something, uh, my my Bella, my Bella cat? I think I'm saying it right. Can you hear me? If you can nope. mute yourself. Yeah, otherwise, if everybody could just mute themselves while LJ is talking, it would be good. Okay, I'll go on. Um, <clears throat> First Peter 1, 3, blessed be the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And First John 5, 1, whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him, that, that begot loveth him also, that is begotten of him. <clears throat> so this word begotten is, is, a, is a very important word. Let me get back to that. So man was created for a very important purpose. It says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? That God created this creature man to reproduce his character in, creating a new creature that will be identical to him. Colossians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we so we are being transformed daily into into this new creature that the first 
of these big creatures as Jesus Christ, yeah. is, which is God in the flesh, a marriage of spirit and flesh. This is what we become. Yeah. In but it is a lifelong process of, of changing, of renewing of mind, of being transformed into the creator. This is why uh, the creator, his mind is full of the thoughts of man. His, his, his mind is always thinking of us. It's because as he's working in, in I all of day us. off today, Cass. Day off today. Let's take a day off. So people really don't understand why, um, why, why there's so much evil and so much suffering, and they think that God doesn't know what he's doing. But God shows that he knows exactly what he's doing. In Isaiah 45, 7 and 8, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all of these things. So God, he, 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 he designed this creation for evil to come in because we cannot understand one one without the other this is this is basic um opposite we, you know we learn by opposites hot cold um light dark uh, good we can't understand one without the other so evil had to come into existence and this is the, the plans of god colossians 1 16 and 20 for by him were all things created that are in heaven that are in earth visible and in, invisible whether they be thrones or dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him you know, the thing is that we understand everything was created by him. Is that all the heat now or? Did it be? Oh, one green light on or two? No. Hello, friends. Can you, can everybody oh, yeah. except LJ, please yeah. mute yourself? Right. So it's heated. Oh. Ready to go. There was two green lights. It's preheating. Okay. Yeah, please, please mute yourself. I don't, I don't think they got the computer right now. It's Okay. All right, so um, what was I saying? For all things were created. Okay, we, we understand that everything was created by by God, but the thing that gets missed is everything was created for Him and for His purposes. Evil, even evil and suffering and pain was created for God. You know that the the creation is not suffering on its own. Everything that is that is being suffered by us is being suffered by God even more because. All of it is being suffered by him, not just from one person, not just from from one animal that is being killed in in, in sacrifice. All of that is being ha All of that is happening to God. So Ephesians one four, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So this, this, is, this, this is another um, topic that um, I really won't, won't get into right now, but free will is not something that is, that is biblical. You know, it, it, we have a, the, a freedom of choice, but our will is not free. Only God has free will. And, and predestin predestination is what the Bible teaches. He has predestined those who are going to be evil and those who are going to be good. And he chosen us who seek him. He chose he chose us from the foundation before the, the world's even created. He chose us to be to be good, basically. We are the ones that, that are going to be transformed into him. And then we have those who are evil or who are who will be testing us and who will be helping us to prove our love. Evil is is used to, to for a test to prove our love to, to God, basically, and or to prove our love. All right, will. Will the word will is to have a will is have in mind or intend to be resolved or to determine, to purpose. Now, this is go back to our will not being free because we don't have the freedom to purpose anything we want to do. You know, people say that, that we, our minds create our reality, and that, that's true to a certain extent. We can create um, a, a reality of, of doom and, and, and gloom and, and, and depression because of what, what our minds think. And then we, cr we can create a, a world of happiness, you know, in, in, in a, into, um, you know, from, from a certain extent. But we can't, we can't um, purpose our own destiny because God chose that. God chose our destiny before the foundations of the world. So our will is not free. We have the freedom of choice. Just like in Deuteronomy, he said, choose you these day, this day, you know, choose good or evil, life or death. We, that's the choices we have to make. But we do have a will. We have a will to choose. You know, I'm going to want to get too much into that. So Philippians 2, 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good, good pleasure. So it is God that, that is God's will that is working in us to do his good pleasure. Everything was created by him and for him. We were, we were created for him. <clears throat> 
All right. So in Deuteronomy, I have like as I said, just like I said, see, I have set before before thee this day life and good, death and evil. And I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. <clears throat> so we have the freedom of choice, but not the freedom to will. All right, God is the potter, and we are the clay. In Romans 9, it says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, for even for this same purpose I have raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So God even used Pharaoh, an evil person that 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 um, took the Israelites in slavery. He used him to show his own power. God, God can use evil men to show his power. Evil is 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 used to challenge God, is to challenge God's power, to show who he is, you know, through overcoming that evil. All right, but God commended his, commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. Commendeth means prove. He proved his love toward us, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we, we were sinners and, 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 and evil to God, Christ still died for us because unconditional love can only be proven in a condition where the creation is un unlovable. Excuse me. First uh, John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love of God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So when we understand love, we understand that to prove that love, a sacrifice is needed. That's the only way you can prove love. Because without that, there's no way to prove it. You know, um, if, 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 you know, buying things and, and doing things for somebody prove love, then the richest people on earth will be the most loving, but they're not. You can't just, just do things for people and, and say you love somebody and, and not, not prove it with some kind of sacrifice, with some kind of, some kind of um, proof to show that, that, that you love them. Like, you know, the giving of something. Love is the giving of one's own life, the most important Thing you can ever give the the uh, the the meaning the uh, what is it what I'm trying to say the um the the price the price of love is death. Huh. All right, All right so in, in in the um in those ages in the beginning when when evil first came in, it, it started as a seed a seed that that birthed in that that angel and then it grew and grew and became absolute and, and death became an entity that was the strongest God's love. And we read that in Song of Solomon, for love is as strong as death. Now, God is, is um, we understand that God is one. He's one person, not three, per, not three people in one. Um, first Hebrews, I mean, uh, Hebrews um, one and three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Jesus is the, the express image of God. They are the same person. That, that word person in um in Greek is that's a Greek is, yeah Greek is um uh who, what is it um hypostases to see that is what person a person is and to be a person you know a person has to have a consciousness and that is the state of being alive awake and aware and the second thing a person has to have is intelligence the ability to acquire and apply apply knowledge the third thing a person has to have is a conscience the power to process information in terms of good and evil. We have these three things and God has three things. God mm -hmm. is a conscious, intelligent being with a conscience. Well, God is absolutely good. There is no evil in him at all. That he cannot even be tempted with evil. He's absolutely good. And this, these are the three qualities that, that a, person, a person needs. There's a conscious intelligence and a conscience. Our conscience had to be first written with e evil first. It couldn't be, it, it, it was, it was, it couldn't be like a, um, like blank. It, it had to, like if, you, if it was in the beginning, it was, it was blank and they just on, only understood, understood good. It was good all poured into, into them. So they had no understanding of evil. So the, 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 the plan was for evil to come so the understanding of both could come so we could only be able to choose good understanding both good and evil so then the blood that christ shed when he died on the cross that would be the ink that would rewrite our evil conscience and turn it into a good conscience in hebrews 9 14, my favorite scripture 
how much more so the blood of Christ who through the eternal offered himself with us spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Our conscience is being purged from all of the evil works that we do and the works that 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 that, that are meaningless is being purged into a good conscience. And this is all by the by the word of God. This is what the word of God does. All right. And, um, and we know the whole world is in, is, is lies in wickedness. Everything is is evil right now. Everything is out of tune with God. So I said before, God is not is not a far off. He's not um looking down on. And this this scripture right here proves it. Isaiah fifty three four five. Surely, he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was with his stripes we are healed. This is this is a um a, a prophecy of Jesus suffering for us on the cross. And he's and the suffering is not over yet. It won't be over until he returns. All the suffering in this world that's happening right now is happening to our creator. It's happening to him first. And then it's then it's then it's happening to us. My reproduction is the action or process of okay in Genesis chapter two, where God was going to make man Adam a help that was meat for him, he made one of his own kind. God formed all of the animals. He didn't give Adam an ape, a monkey, or any other creature for a companion. He made someone that, of, that was of his own species, somebody that could love him equally. And this is the same, same thing that God wanted for himself. He wanted someone that he could love equally. This is why, <clears throat> this is why man is, is, is so um, important to God, because we were chosen to be elevated on his level. All right, uh, Colossians 1, 11 through 13, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In Romans 8, uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For he, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. So we are chosen to be conformed or transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, the son of God, who is the express image of God. God wanted a companion would give him joy and able to love on his level. So why would he accept anybody that would be less than him? He wanted someone of his own kind. All right. So uh, let's go down. Did that Okay. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, Genesis 2, 7. God breathed into the nostrils of man. That breath was the, the, the life the life force that all, all creatures have that God breathed into him. So everything, almost everything in creation has some kind of consciousness, has some kind of, um, has that, that, that breath of life in them or some kind of uh, consciousness. And, and that Luke 19 says the stones would immediately cry out. And it says, the, and then Isaiah it says, the mountains and hills shall break forth into singing and the trees and the fields will clap their hands. So the Bible does imply that everything has a form of consciousness. We read about this, these things. And then, but consciousness and intelligence are not the same thing. All things that are conscious are not intelligent. And an offspring of God would need both. Some people equate the person to the body, but you know, the body of Adam did not become a person until God breathed life into him and he became a living soul. So the body is the vessel or the house for the soul. But these are two separate things. Before the breath of life entered into that body, it was not a soul. It wasn't conscious yet. And it wasn't uh, intelligent yet. These characteristics are immaterial and of a spiritual nature, but the body is material. The word in Hebrew is the word, the, uh, the word soul in Hebrew is the word nefesh. And it literally means breath. 
man became a living, breathing, conscious entity that is housed in a body made from the earth. All right, now we look, we look at this word in the New Testament Greek, we see the word suke, and it is from this, we get the word psyche and psychology. <clears throat> this word psyche is the human mind, the human soul, mind, or spirit. It is the life force, the vital force, the identity, the personality, the, the makeup of a person. This word lets us know that the soul is more than just consciousness, being awake and aware. It signifies a psyche, the mind, intelligence. Every soul has a measure of intelligence. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He was conscious. He was intelligent. He had the ability to acquire and apply knowledge, but he was missing something. And the thing he was missing was a consciousness. I mean, uh, it was a conscience. It was the, the power to, um, put, it was the power to pre, uh, process information in terms of good and evil. That's what happened when he ate of that fruit, that tree, the, the fruit, the, uh, the fruit from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil had to, it had to grow over time and become this tree because evil had to, had to start as a seed and grow, like I said before, and had to grow into something that was absolute, that was the absolute opposite of God. So this tree could be, could be planted so that we can acquire a conscience. And that is, the mo that is the heart of the Bible, the most important thing that we, that we need to focus on is our conscience, the ability to process things in terms of good and evil. <clears throat> That's, that is what Adam lacked before they ate of that tree of the uh, fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. This, this is something that people think was a mistake and God, God um, made a mistake and had to fix it, but no, it was, it was, it was absolutely planned that man ate of that tree and became evil first so that God would rewrite, rewrite that evil conscience in, into a good conscience. All right, so the word conscious in the Greek is the word sunitis, is the, the last part, itis is where we get the word idea from, meaning to see and to know. In terms of consciousness, conscience, it is co-perception and co-knowledge. Co meaning something that you align yourself with from the knowledge of it, your mind being governed or aligned with the knowledge of either good or evil. It's, it's like I said, it's no in between. That we, are, we are being programmed every day by either good or evil. All right, the simple definition here is the soul as distinguishing between what is morally good and bad, prompting to do the former and shun the latter, commending one and condemning the other. In Matthew 6.24, it says, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and the things of this world. He just said, no man can serve two masters. All right. So God made Adam and Eve and put him in this garden named e Eden. <clears throat> and there were two trees that were identified in the Bible. It was, one was a tree of life, which only has significance when there is death. And the other was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I always used to wonder why. God would plant this tree containing the knowledge of evil along with good. But I went over this before that, you know, you can't understand one without the other. And the whole plan of God was to infect this creation with evil first. And then God would, would come down in a flesh and blood body to prove his love to us and make that sacrifice. And that blood that was shed would be the ink that will rewrite us, rewrite our conscience and purge it from that evil and turn it into a perfectly good conscience. That's the only way that we can be equals, we can be heirs with God, is to become equal with God on his level, to be above on his level without anything hindering that. So 1 Corinthians 15, 47, 49, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is from the, is the Lord from heaven above. As is the earthy, such are they also, that also are earthy. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So right now, we bear the image of Adam. When Adam was created, going back to the image of God, yeah, all this stuff is connected, going back to the image of God. Adam was not the, the first image of God, as people, people think. And we, we, Adam was, was in the likeness of God. And then we are the image of Adam. We bear the image of the earthy, Adam. Until God, until Jesus died on the cross and made the ink that would purge our conscience, we it was no way for us to become the image of God. 
<clears throat> now we can become the image of God by the death, resurrect, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that, <clears throat> that the blood would, would purge our conscience, and then we would become the image of Christ, of heavenly things. All right, Adam was not, the, okay, I read that already. All right, so that verse in Genesis 127, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, Jesus. Male, Adam, and female, Eve, created he them. Now, in regards to Jesus Christ being the image of God, there is a misunderstanding. Okay, I read that already. All right, so what is an image? An image is literally the word character. Okay, Adam was not the image because God's personality and his character had not been written had not been written upon him yet. The KJV translates express image to character, the, the instrument used for engraving or carving, the mark stamped upon the instrument or rock out on it. <clears throat> so character is like a um his image, his character had to be written or inscribed in us. The word scribe means to write. But the word inscribe means to engrave, means to write inside or within, making a permanent impression. So God doesn't, doesn't write on, on the outside of us. It is on the inside of us, is, is engraved in us. For example, a seal stamped in, on wax showing the image of that, of that seal or a trophy that has a name inscribed or engraved on it. It is not just written on it with like a pen. All right. As we bear the image of the earthy, we should also bear the image of the heavenly. All right, we bear the image of Adam who is earthy. He's an earthy man. Then over time, the evil conscience is purged by the blood and we begin to change more and more into the image of Christ who is the image of God. This is a, a lifelong process. It is not something that happens overnight. We are daily, we, we, we need to um, decrease as God increases. We need to crucify our flesh daily. So this is this is an ongoing thing. Life is is like a school. It's a lesson that we everything is a lesson that we can learn, and those lessons it, it constitute us changing and, and, and being transformed into the very Creator Himself, who is love. As humans, we have children and we give birth to our own kind, and this is what God wanted to do. He wanted to give birth to more of His own kind, but He had to reproduce His own character, and this is where we come into the word begotten and only begotten. And that has happened in Jesus Christ. He was the first complete image of God. And this is something, again, that is not Adam because he did not have the character of God. But he it was destined that out of him will come the one who would be the person of God. Now we follow after Christ and the copy has been done. And basically that same process of reproduction that happened in Jesus is being repeated. And the one chosen to be begotten of the father. Right now, Jesus is called the only begotten and the firstborn of every creature. All right, the only begotten that re reflects back on the word, the word monog that is the word, the Greek word monogamous. The way it is spelled is monogenes, and the word genes is in there, the same from Genesis and genes. This is the beginning, all right, the beginning of, of the creation. That's why he is called that. So genetics come from this word, and that God reproduced and he wrote himself in that person using, a, using the genetic coding, the language we call the word. All right, it's going back to the word. Everything is connected. This is the whole process that was completed in Christ. And it started long ago, a long, long time before, even before the Garden of Eden. As a matter of fact, ages before man was created. And this is going into the age of the, the creation of the, the, pre, the prehistory of creation. All right, and I give a timeline of that. And I won't really get into that right now because um, we're talking about the word right now. <clears throat> the, the, the thing that creates everything. So in Genesis 1, 2, where we find the earth without form and void with darkness that is evil covering everything. And remember I said darkness <clears throat> is always considered evil in the Bible. It is the word koshek. And every time that it is used, it's talking about evil. So when, when it says darkness was um, upon the face of the deep, that is not just because God didn't start creating everything first. It, it was because that evil had infected everything and it was dark it, and it was, it was evil. It was spiritual darkness. Okay, this all happened so that we will one day get to this time in the garden where there will be a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, if that evil had not existed already in God's creation, there would have been no knowledge of evil. So therefore, God 
had to allow evil to come into existence before he could make this creature who would have a conscience. All right. The conscience is the faculty that we have that that we use to determine good and evil. All right. John 1 12. But many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And first Peter 1 3. Blessed. Be the God of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the, his abundant mercy had begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. Hebrews 1, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. All right. Now, now this word son is, is a very significant word in the Bible. <clears throat> you know, son, the title of son or sonship means that you have to be born, born of flesh and blood first. And then to become the sons of God, you have to be born of the spirit. You had to be begotten of God. Uh, so this is where the understanding of genetics, as far as the programming of the mind and heart, which represents the conscience, conscience is concerned. When God set out to do this, he would use his own genetics to create a race of beings called the sons of God. Now, not just the sons of God who were men, the sons of God that were created in the beginning, who, who were not begotten. These sons of God are begotten of God. The, the false doctrine is, is, is that the sons of God are angels, and we know that's not true. So because angels cannot reproduce and they don't have seed. All right. So the word begotten is genao in, in Greek, and is the, the root word is gene, which is a programming language. So these begotten sons of God, Jesus Christ being the first one, the head, the archetype, are those creatures that God has reproduced himself in spiritually and intellectually. That is the whole purpose. <clears throat> and the complex part of this whole process was the idea of the conscience, knowing good and evil, of how God, who was good, could reproduce that character of good in his children by using the opposite, which is evil, to educate them, giving them a perfect conscience, understanding evil, yet only being able to choose good. This is how we know that God is good and he is everlasting and self-sustaining, because if if one tiny particle of evil was in him, then everything would 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 just dissipate. Everything would, would be destroyed. Because that's and that's how we know that he is all good and no evil in him. But yet he understands evil. All right. And Mark 10, um, 18. And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Now, when we say that God is good, we remember the scripture and then. <clears throat> but. Uh, hold on. And most people get a little confused when they hear that. And I wasn't confused a little bit, too. And it's what, li what this literally means as, is when um, there is only one being in all creation that is absolutely good and there can only be one. All right. Uh, James 1.13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, but God cannot be even tempted with evil. Neither can he tempteth any man. And on uh, 1 John 1.5, then this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So the Bible tells us that God can't even be tempted with evil, meaning that he is completely and totally immune to it. This is, the very, this is a very important thing to understand about God, that God is not relatively good. Like you might say somebody is good, he's a good person, or this is a good man, or you know, we, are, we know that we're speaking in, in relatively, he's relatively good, but none of us are perfect or perfectly good. Only God is. <clears throat> that he has never, ever been evil, nor can he be evil. And there's one problem with evil. It contains within his, in itself, evil. It contains within itself the seed of its own destruction. Like I said before, one of, if one of the tiniest particles of evil enters into a person, it will spread like wildfire, eventually, eventually destroying the host. And the, the end of that destruction is death, which is the abs absence of life. And death is a state, is not non-existence, and there's no way around it. But it was necessary for death to bring us the knowledge of love. So the thing is, if God was even like one, one microparticle of evil, one speck of darkness, in the end, it would destroy him and all of creation. So this is what proves that he is from everlasting to everlasting, that he is self-sustaining and can only be that way if he is absolutely good. He is the eternal spirit that raised Christ from the dead and will do the same for us. There is no person anywhere in existence like this. So why would we want to follow anybody else? <clears throat> it will all eventually lead to death. Everything in this world will lead to death if it's not through God. 
So knowing that he is absolutely good should make us put all our faith and trust in him, knowing that he will keep his promises and never fail us. All right, now the real gospel of all of this and what this is all for, what everything is, pro what everything is, is programmed for, what God started this plan and what we are programmed for so we can have peace is we just stated that God is absolutely good and set out to reproduce himself. And he wanted, he wanted to make more of his own kind. So God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because God is a spirit, Jesus told us, we understand that God is intelligent. He's, he's, he's a conscious being with a conscience, but that doesn't mean he's a physical person. God is information. He, he is a immaterial mind, you could say. And that mind, there are thoughts. And God tells us he thinks. He says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You know, that as just as the heavens are higher than the earth, that's how high his thoughts are over ours. <clears throat> so his thoughts are higher than ours. For example, God has the idea of flying through the heavens or swimming through the oceans, right? So in order to have that experience or feeling, he would need something physical. And that's where, that's where the importance of the body comes in, that God who was life, he experiences life through his creation. And I read before Isaiah 53, 45, he bore our, our griefs and our sorrows. This is why he created us all, understanding that this is happening, all of this, this that is happening to us is actually happening to him. He is experiencing it through us. Otherwise, it will only happen in his mind. Like in our minds, you know, we can think about skydiving and even vividly dream about it. <clears throat> but no matter how hard we think about skydiving and even dreaming about it, no matter how hard you think about it, that actual experience of boarding a plane and flying up and jumping out of it, it will never be the same as what you had in your mind as from actually doing it. So God is very near to us in so much that he lives through us and through our experiences. It is all happening to him. All the pain, all the suffering all the anger, the sadness, and all the happiness, the joy, and the peace, and the love. All of that stuff is, is, is happening to God. And people say all kinds of things against God because they don't see, <clears throat> because they see so much evil being allowed, but they don't understand that all of what they see and feel is actually happening to him. It's happening to the creator. He is allowing it to happen to him, and he is enduring it all because he loves, <clears throat> he loves us and wants us to understand that love. So God being the person that he is, he can experience multiple things simultaneously. He can enjoy exploring the deepest sea, uh, traversing the densest jungle while soaring through the heavens, all at the same time in different vessels as one person. See, God is one. He's one person, not three in one. He's just one person. But yet that one person can dwell in many vessels. <clears throat> you know, he, God is, is, is God. God is in the son of God. God is the Holy Spirit, and the Bible talks about the seven spirits of God. God is, is wisdom, which is personified as a female. You know, God is all of these things, but yet it is the one person that is God. <clears throat> so <clears throat> he has prepared for us a house that is incorruptible and eternal. In my father's house, there are many mansions. The mansions that he's talking about is this house that, that is incorruptible, our, our bodies that we will be receiving that will not, wear, <clears throat> will not wear out or suffer pain and won't be limited in any way, experiencing all things at the same time as the one person of God, which is something incredible and something we just cannot comprehend in this current state. This is why, this is why God said in the right hand, there are, many, there are pleasures forevermore. <clears throat> we will be in an age where evil will be done away with, when we'll be fully transformed into God's image, having his mind and his heart becoming life, becoming love, and God will dwell in all of us. <clears throat> okay, that scripture says, um, 1 Corinthians 15, 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That means God will be in all. All of this, all of this new creation, the, the new heaven and the new earth, he will be in all of it and there will be no more evil. <clears throat> the understanding of evil will still be there and we will, we will, it, it's not, this life is not for nothing. We don't go through all of this stuff for nothing. We're going to be, we will, like the, the song says, we'll understand it better by and by. We'll understand why this evil had to come and we can, we can talk about it. We can understand it, but yet we won't be able to choose it anymore. It'll be a time of peace and joy and excitement. This is what we have to look forward to. This is something that is more valuable than anything in this world. 
But you know, Satan, the devil, he keeps our mind occupied on earthly things, keeping us from seeing what God wants to do for us. We know that God is absolutely good. And this is what the Bible teaches us. And a true reproduction of God will also need to be absolutely good at the end of his transformation, which means immune and incapable of evil. <clears throat> and that is what God has done through this whole plan and process, what the sacrifice of Jesus Christ has done for us. Again, in Hebrews 9, 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Our conscience is being purged and purged until the point where it's all gone, the evil is all gone. And then we become in the same image that is Christ, who is the image of God. All right. <clears throat> And it's just it's so much more than us having eternal life. And it's so much more than us just going to heaven when we die. It is the transformation of our mind and our heart, purging our conscience from works that are evil to slowly over a lifetime change us into God. Then God will be all in all of us. He began this process in man in that garden, giving us a conscience. When he ate that fruit from the tree, when he did that, <clears throat> they became creatures of conscience. But this was just the beginning of the journey because the first conscience they acquired was evil. It was the serpent's conscience. The devil called Satan, who is the complete opposite of God. None of that was an accident that God had to fix later. It had to happen this way, and it was all pre-planned by God. All right. First Peter 1, 9, 19 and 7. I think I read this already. Um, but the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily, <clears throat> verily was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now, this, this, it was a mystery before in the Old Testament. It, it, was, it was not manifest back then. They didn't understand it. But now we understand that who Christ is and, 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 the, and the, um, the, the price that he had to pay for us to come to this understanding, to prove that love to us. All right, Ephesians 1, 4, according as he hath chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And it's the only way we can do that. All right. So the, the whole the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of these sons of God, these begotten sons of God. The creature was made subject to vanity, but not willingly. We were subject to evil. We were subject. We were supposed to become evil. But God didn't want to do this willingly. Willingly. He did not. He did not. He, he did not um, want to do this, but he calculated that it was necessary for evil to come for us to understand who he is, to understand who, what love is and the, to understand the price of love. All right, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondages of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was to be slain from the foundations of the world. So even before any of the, these things happened with Adam and Eve, it was necessary for them to make the wrong choice first, to become creatures of conscience. But before their conscience could become good like God's, it had to become evil first. All right, and this is another teaching that uh, when I we will explain why evil had to come first, and that is that is uh, directly tied into to those ages that that came before Adam. All right, so <clears throat> conscience is 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 so is, is is stated so much in the Bible. You have it in John and Matthews and Hebrews and all these scriptures right here. All right, so but the plan was always the the plan was always for the antidote or the cure to be provided that will purge that evil, removing it completely. Like a computer's hard drive that crashed because a virus got introduced into it, then to administer the antivirus to remove it. But you know, not just removing it, but bringing something else in, writing a software program into it so that virus could never infect that computer again. This is what the blood of Christ is really for. The power in it not only removes that evil from us, it makes us so that it can never enter in, into us again, so that we can become absolutely good, just like God is. You know, you hear so much things about the blood of Christ and, and how it and, and how it casts out demons and, and the blood of Christ and all this kind of stuff, but they don't really understand what the blood is for. It's the, the ink that purges our conscience, all right? <clears throat> That's what makes us the begotten sons of God. That's what makes us worthy to become his heirs. God is not going to give his kingdom to creatures that are capable of bringing evil back into his creation. You know, like the angels that sinned and turned against him in the beginning of creation, they didn't have the knowledge of evil. So it was inevitable that that evil would eventually come. <clears throat> but God can confidently give his begotten sons the kingdom because like him, they can no longer be tempted with evil. Now, this is the real good news. 
not only will we have eternal life, we will be absolutely good like God, that we won't even be able to think about evil. It won't even be able to enter into our minds. That is how powerful the sacrifice of God is for us. It is to literally create in you a perfect conscience. For with God, nothing is impossible. Now, this thing is something that is very impossible for us to do, for, not, for us to not even think about evil. But like Luke 1 through 1, uh, 37 says, with God, nothing's, nothing is impossible. He, he, he has performed the impossible. It is only by a miracle that we can even begin to comprehend this because it is impossible to make somebody perfect. Yet God has done it. So when we look at the road ahead of us, when we got to go through versus what really has been promised to us, it is so much more than that we can't even begin to fathom. You know, the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us, in inside of us. You know, not 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 where we where we will go when we die, but who will we who we will be, be become the person that we will become. That is God. All right. So it is has nothing to do with material things or what heaven will be like in all of the mansions that we will have or nothing like that. But it is the person that we will become who we will be transformed into, that is the person of God. All right, so the word person in Greek is hypostases, meaning substance. And and eventually me and Paul, we will do a deep study of the one person that is God. And he is not three people in one, but one person, the substance of God is the person of God. So we are literally like computers that are being programmed for a very specific purpose. And it is working in everybody's life either for good or bad. So without this incredible power of God, we would never change. We would never have chosen him. He has chose us. We have not chose him. It's making us a better person. And eventually it will make us a perfect person. The same person that is God, those that are begotten of him, who believe in Jesus Christ, who are born again, who will stay the course and endure until the end, excuse me, finishing their race, and they will enter into eternal life. All right? They will be a new race of beings that has come from the flesh and blood, sons of God. But in Corinthians, we can read that flesh and blood cannot in- inherit the kingdom of God. It is reserved for this new creature, this new species. It is not humankind, it is not mankind anymore, but it is God kind, a perfect union of spirit and flesh with the genes of God, the genetics of God. And I'll advise, you, advise everybody to study this Bible and meditate on these scriptures and definitely, you know, <clears throat> watch watch these, these videos and these teachings and studies over and over and repetition and meditate, meditate on it. And, and really, you know, every, you know, shouldn't, don't believe what I say, but believe the Bible. And a man who, uh, I'm a man who fails every day and just, just check me out. Let every man be a liar, but God be true. And the words are very important and very crucial to our belief in the truth and understanding what they mean and to hear what God is telling us. And nothing has has nothing that has ha- not been previously planned <clears throat> has happened. And the, and the end result was that God wanted to make more of himself. All right. So um, that's basically it. And I'm going to just give it back to Paul. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, LJ. Uh, that, is a, that is a really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful and appreciative for everyone that uh, like yourself who, who takes the time to do these deep studies and uh, you know I'm happy that you have now that you are now able to uh, share with us and I will recommend everybody you know that uh, this study like the like LJ said that this, this is this is this is the whole purpose you know this is what it's all about. It is about the transformation from mankind to God kind and how complex and how difficult the process it has been. But like God, like LJ said, nothing is impossible for God and he has made it possible. So yeah, this, this topic is something that needs to be studied and to be revisited again and again and again and again and again. And therefore, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to see that, you know, people like LJ that take the time. You can see what a lengthy study he has done. And, uh, you know, I would again keep inviting him that you should come back and, uh, you know, revisit the same study. It doesn't even have to be a new one because there's so much depth in it that uh, one one hour is not enough really to uh, to to for us to all comprehend it, for us, for it to become revelation in all of us. 
So thanks, Alja. Really, really, truly appreciate it. Uh, anyhow, so now I'm just going to uh, ask, you know, if anybody else would like to share with us. Oh, by the way, you know, uh, LJ and anybody else is watching, I, I believe you guys can record these meetings on your end as well. And I would recommend that whoever can do so should, because sometimes in case I have a problem uh, with the recording, then uh, somebody else has a backup. So that would be a good good thing to do. All right. Uh, I see there's, uh, you know, uh, are some other uh, people that are online right now. So again, it's open. Uh, this is supposed to be a fellowship and that is my desire is that, uh, you know, not just for me to be doing all the talking or teaching all the time, it is to uh, everybody else. Like we are all students and we are all should be teaching as well. So I would, uh, you know, invite anybody at any time that wants to have, share their understanding. They of course can do that in these meetings, but uh, late, as we progress through them, it is my desire to see everybody become teachers of the word and to share what they are learning in these meetings and in their own studies with everyone else. Okay, so did, uh, did uh, could you please, uh, if somebody else would like to share a word or something, please put up your hand and uh, and let's, uh, I'll uh, open it up to you. All right. That's wonderful. Looks like, uh, you know, everybody is, uh, Busy. Oh, I see Michael has come on. So please, uh, Michael, please go go for it and uh, share what's on your mind. Well, I just want to thank you so much for the teaching, LJ. I always enjoy listening to you. You have got a ton of good stuff, uh, information that's uh, uh, deep, and it's a lot of meat, and it's uh, you can chew on it for for weeks on end. It's awesome. And I always enjoy listening to you, Paul, as well. So I just want to thank you for the talk. It was phenomenal. And uh, I know you took, I'm sure you took a lot of time putting together and everything. And uh, it's quite a blessing. I missed a bit of the first part because uh, I was out, had to help a good friend uh, pack up and uh, go. She was here for a couple of days. And so just want to thank you so much for it. I can't wait to listen to the recording uh, over and over, like you said. And uh, it's just great. So uh, it's very inspirational. And everything you shared uh, that I heard was uh, fantastic. So I just want to let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Michael. Appreciate that. Thank, thanks, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a blessing, you know, to be able to come, like as LJ said at the beginning, to be in one accord is, you know, there's that, that word has many meanings. It could also be like a cord that connects us all. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, when you have a network and we are a network together, thank God that our network, that, uh, that the, you know, like you have fiber optic cables and such things, but uh, that which connects us all is the Holy Spirit. And uh, there's no better connector anywhere in all of creation when you're connected by the creator himself. And therefore, he can bring us all into perfect accord, one accord, to be of one mind. And that, I think, is more necessary in these days than it has ever been before for us to all just, you know, to be on the same page, like they say. Okay. So, again, this uh, week uh, was kind of busy for me, so we didn't get around to doing this meeting on Saturday. I do have my Sunday morning meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning. And, again, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, continue to see how these topics connect together understanding like what happened and then tomorrow it'll be like you know what we've been talking again is uh, why the image of god and michael i would like to invite you if you are uh, if you would like to you know perhaps share something more on that topic tomorrow you know like i did with lj today if you would like to spend some time teaching i would really value that and appreciate it sure. um well i love i imagine Sorry, Micah, can you hold on one second? I'll get sure. back to you. I know you're putting your hand up. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, so, so you're talking about on the topic of love? Yeah, the topic of love, 1 Corinthians okay. 13, the image of God, you know, all connected to it. But yeah, that that's we started discussing and we went, started going into 1 Corinthians 13. Okay. And I know you were talking about that last week. So, you know, if you can put some notes together or whatever, you know, and share them with us, then uh, that would be, uh, you know, a wonderful blessing for us all. Sure, that'd be awesome. 
And thank you. Thank you for inviting me. No, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. I saw Micah had put up his hand. So Micah, if you have something to say, please go right ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks uh, again for everything. And uh, I know that right now uh, we're going through some, uh, what some would call more difficult times, especially with the loss of loved ones and uh, uh, loss of jobs. And that's that's tough. I mean, that can be life shattering for for some people. I know that when I lost my job, of course, that was by my own hand. That's because I was a drunk. But um, I know it it really affected me. But you know, for for someone to be going through that for no real good reason other than a tyrant telling you you have to do something or else, it it, it doesn't. It doesn't compute with our supposed all that, which we have, I guess. Um, but I, I just find that it's th these are times where so many of us start to we start to question other things, and 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 it can lead to questioning God. And I think that it's very important. And I see that some some in my own personal life here and there are starting to falter. They're starting to they're starting to you know go on the wayside and to encourage each other and this is it's not easy and some people are like I, I would like to say something but I I don't feel right with God and and I want to tell you it's not about being right with God all the time because nobody is unless he makes you nobody's right with God so don't ever feel ashamed that oh I had a slip up this week so I can't I can't speak or I, I I'm no one to talk. Listen, none of us are anyone to talk. God talks through you, and God talks to you through broken vessels. And uh, I think it's just important we all encourage each other as we see. We know he's coming. I know it seems like a long stint, maybe 30 more years, possibly. But you know what? Hang on. I mean, some of us don't even have 30 years to live, but I mean, that's another story but i just i just want to encourage people to encourage each other uh you know send that text call that person uh love on them because god loves you all right that's all i've got to say thanks amen god bless you sorry okay thank you thank you micah so i just wanted to say that you know in, in the book of james we can read about him and he said that you know we have to we should look at the, the suffering of job and that the prophets you know how they are examples of long suffering and uh when the judgment of god is coming on a nation and now upon the world you know there are going to be a lot of people like us who are believers but we are going to be also ground uh you know we are going to not exactly escape like the prophet Jeremiah, when uh, the, the the suffering, when the judgment of Jerusalem came, you know, look at look at the suffering the man had to go through. He was thrown into a dungeon of mire. He was put into prison. All kinds of things happened. All things happened to Apostle Paul, even to the other apostles. Apostle James was beheaded. You know, they all eventually were. So we shouldn't expect that it's going to be a, you know a smooth ride anywhere. Like as uh, as these trials come, Jesus was quite plain. He said, you know, some of them, they're going to throw you into prison. Some of them, they're going to, you know, some of you are going to be killed. Be thou faithful unto death. And so, you know, people that who do falter, yes, of course, we pray for them and we support them and we teach them. But in our own mind, you know, we should be prepared that, you know, this, the time of, uh, you know, comfort and ease is gone. And things are most likely going to get much more challenging. And that doesn't mean that, you know, we need to turn, we should turn around and start blaming God. God has written it out for us plainly. Examples of what happened to people in the past who were faithful and believers and what we should be expecting. It's all written there for us. Like in uh, in, in Revelation, in the, the fifth seal, it tells us, you know, it, those, those other believers and martyrs that have gone on before they were told to be patient that... Uh, their brethren who should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So, so yes, so you know, yes, those words should be actually encouraging to us. They shouldn't be discouragement, it should be encouragement that you know, God equipped those people, He gave them the strength to be able to endure. He's already equipped us 
So we are also going to be able to do it. We just have to keep on studying and keep on praying and keep on worshiping and being thankful and, you know, do fasting and do all the things that we need to do and to rejoice because Jesus said, you know, I'm coming. So come look up. Your redemption draws near. Like if, if this is that time that we've all been waiting for, all creation has been waiting for, what a wonderful time. All right, I think on that note, I, if, uh, I will just end this meeting today. And uh, really, blessing and wonderful time and just uh, could continue this all day. But I know we all have <laughs> this life still in truth and we have things to do. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm so happy that we'll have time to do this again tomorrow morning. So 10 a.m. Eastern time. So I'll uh, join you then. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus that you gave us this time to uh, fellowship, to meet us, and, you know, to see LJ's wonderful child there, you know, waving. <laughs> and uh, such a blessing. I'm happy. You know, I'm rejoicing right now because it's been, it's it's just, there's no better way. I had, like I was telling in the beginning, I had some, uh, a little event where I was with some family yesterday, and it was there. They are not of the same pace, same mind, whatever. And it's such a burden. But this for me is not a burden. To fellowship with all of you, it's, it's love, it's like joy, it's pleasure. And I thank God that he gives us this opportunity. All right, brothers and sisters, see you tomorrow. Okay? God bless you all. Bless you.